<laughs> recording has started. It doesn't tell you on this program, does it? Like Blue Jeans, she always told you, recording has started. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, hi Sam, how are you doing? Hey, I'm not too bad. 24th hour lecture turnaround. <laughs> <laughs> well, conversation, so it's a bit different. Conversation. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> but yeah, impressive. Um, I think my question, <laughs> I've got the first question, haven't I, to ask you a little bit about just talking about the context of conscious isolation and the idea behind setting it up. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, as you are well aware, it all came about as a bit of fun, really, didn't it, in the first instance? I think um, it was two weeks into lockdown and I decided to put together a page which was just called the Fine Art Lecture Series. <laughs> I think <laughs> Had... it was week one, wasn't it? Was it week one? Right, it? Start, yeah. Doing the start, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably was, to be honest with you. But I mean, you know, it was, uh, as, as you are aware, and, uh, you know, I'm aware obviously of you as well, that we're both keen educators and, you know, have had a lot to do with different universities, um, art uh, universities around, around the country. And I just thought it would be a great opportunity to start something online, you know. Um, it was, I thought it was, I certainly was, although it was only a week in or two weeks in, whatever it was, was already feeling the bite of not having as much culture in my life as, 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 as one usually was used to. So I thought it'd be a very nice experiment, um, you know, to, to correlate this, this initiative and, you know, you, you very quickly came on board with it, um. And I mean, to be honest with you, I think that you you made it um, a very a very diverse and dynamic, you know, uh, operation, uh, which I was sort of like most, you know, it's just sort of great for me, who's as you know, isn't as uh, as computer tolerant as uh, as you. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. So I ba so basically, it was um, it was just to just to have. And, uh, to engage an audience with with that of visual culture um, and you know and here we are you know what six months later <laughs> yeah I think so and what for I think this is our, like over 50th event so it's quite hell. we did loads during the lockdown one and then um we've been obviously keeping it going but kind of slightly less intense rate during the interlude and now we're into lockdown too <laughs> um hopefully the last lockdown but yeah it's been it's been really good to to have that hasn't it and have the kind of the it really has i mean it's been great because it's a it's a true evolution of i think a very uh, interesting contemporary pro project and being able to harvest um you know the use of technology it's dead interesting isn't it because i think with regards to how um we've started to operate uh, alongside universities london and obviously the the usual uh lecture i suppose um the the usual position for lectures is that you get people in which are um, more localized you know to to the institution whatever it might be and the, the great thing of this is that we can you know pull people from all over the bloody world it's great um so yeah. and and I think that you know this is something which universities are adopting. I mean, you you you'll know better than I because you 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 know you've got a couple of teaching uh, jobs in other institutions. Um, but yeah, to really kind of maximise on how uh, students can sort of view view the world, not just through one uh, one nation's lenses, but actually uh, periodically worldwide, um, which is great. I was I was actually wondering. I mean, you know, with regards to this, um, you know, how, how was the process of setting it up for you? Um, yeah, it was good. I mean, it was interesting because it kind of just evolved, didn't it? Like you asked some people, and like you asked me if I wanted to help out with it um, very early on, and um, I was yeah, I was keen. I was at home. I was isolated on my own, which is like the weirdest experience. I've well, you mean London had. still? No, I'd left by that point, so that I was um, I was living on my own and completely isolated. So I think for the first two and a half months, I didn't really see another human being 
apart from my neighbour on the balcony every now and again. Uh, which is really strange it's really it's bizarre and I'm quite sociable so it's quite a bizarre experience but I think it was really it was a lifeline in terms of that and keeping culturally engaged and keeping a network going but I think yeah. also the way it evolved quite organically was nice so kind of spreading networks and connecting across um, different places and then kind of thinking about the marketing of it and trying out different platforms and kind of trying out the different possibilities that platforms can can allow so obviously it's different doing a one-on-one -on -one artist talk to doing a panel discussion and it's different again to um host an online exhibition and um yeah it's been I like that way the way I, I like projects that kind of have that sense of freedom that they can just kind of develop in quite an organic way without having to set a mission statement at the start and kind of you know to to structure an idea it can kind of just you can slowly make changes and adapt as and when and i think it's also really nice for the speakers because it's a kind of formal way of giving an artist talk. it's slightly i mean giving an artist talk on the on an online platform is very different isn't it to giving one in real life like there's no Kind of energy it was kind of different energy in the there's, well, there's no physical energy in the room <laughs> um but it's i feel like it kind of lends itself really well to a, a more um kind of uh, like a more intimate or kind of uh, uh, like more informal but in not in a negative way like in, in a good in a good way kind of like more discursive or i don't know what i don't know what it is i can't pinpoint it but it's interesting you say that because what I found is that, um, I mean, obviously my background isn't all that interesting. It's just white with a bloody thermometer. But, you know, it's interesting, like seeing um, other, like your, your background, you know, and that does actually open up into what the personality of that person is, which I think is always very interesting. And some people have some really, it looks, some people sometimes it looks like they've set it like a scene, you know, in a film. Uh, whilst, yeah. <laughs> whilst others it's you know it's it's more like it's more natural like this you know, you've got the door half open and i can see a painting in the background it's like what what is that what's that marvelous thing on the on the on the shelf <laughs> and there are unruly plants i had to just hide my washing for the first four weeks i could they was always washing <laughs> it just looks so unprofessional how can i like move the furniture to avoid that <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> i remember you saying it actually <laughs> yeah it's quite voyeuristic isn't it but i think mm. also the the possibility to meet artists in their studios because i think obviously if you're a gallerist or a curator you get access to to artist studios quite regularly and you do studio visits but uh, unless an artist is doing an open studio um like a more official thing it's or you know them really well it's quite rare that you get to go to a, a studio. So I think the, not that all our speakers are speaking from a studio, but when, when they are, I think it's really lovely to like get the insights into the, the process in that sense. And like they'll sometimes zoom into their materials or show, you'll see things in the background that are like kind of, it's like someone opening up their mind. Like, like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, it really is. <laughs> Karen in the chat says nothing can be worse than her, her lesbians poster. I think her poster is pretty excellent and hopefully at the end um, we can do gallery view and see, see that poster. Pretty, pretty great. <laughs> um, I think that what, yeah, we were going to talk a little bit about the recent collaboration with the University of East London. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I suppose um, I'll give you a bit of background on the reason I suppose we've, we, we've started working with them. Um, I've pretty much had every bloody job under the sun at University of East London, other than janitor, I suppose. <laughs> um, so, you know, I started off when I was in my early 20s as uh, the University of East London's um, metalwork technician. And then from that, I went on to uh, the BA. So I was tutoring a BA course uh, for, you know, on and off. For about a year I guess and then I went into um went then I went into the MA yeah you know, which I which I was um lecturer for three years I believe maybe four and that was from the age of 30 to yeah 33 
34. Um, and, um, but yeah, so I, I, I've had, I suppose it's such a strange thing because the University of London for me is a little bit like, um, it's a little bit like, it is, this is going to sound really corny, but it's a little bit like a family because I've known them all since I was like, you know, five, um, due to my mother being a tutor at the, the institution, um, you know, for, for, I think it's probably closing on 20 years. So yeah, I always had this very close relationship with a lot of the staff there and um, I've seen it evolve and I've seen the people change and, you know, it's, it's fantastic. Um, and it is quite a, a close knit group of people, which are all excellent um, artists, actually practitioners. They really are, you know, they come from all the top universities around the country, which University of London doesn't really get granted um, how brilliant their teaching staff is because um, it's like right out on a limb, isn't it? I mean, you, you, you've been there and it's the opposite bloody city airport and you think you're in the, the arse end of nowhere. Um, but really, um, it's, it's a very dynamic, diverse uh, university using many different um, strategies to, to, to educate. And the visual part of the, the university is, is exquisite. Um, so yeah, basically, uh, we started chatting about how we could get this in to um, a more official educational um, institution format, whatever you wish to call it. And and the University of London came up. We started having those really brilliant conversations with Emma and Dan Duran, um, which really kind of they really really took it um, took it on board, didn't they? They 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 really nurtured and they were our champions, really. Yeah, no, definitely. Injecting it into the course, which was, uh, it, it injects it into the, um, the, the diversity of the, uh, the visual language courses at the university. And what's fantastic now is that, you know, we, we're kind of being, um, we, we've got sort of free reign. We're still, um, we're still, we're bolt on. And we, we have our own control over what we wish to present. But um, it, it seems more and more so that we're kind of having uh, having quite a, a, a valuable um, input and also opinion with regards to what it is that's going to be nurtured through those courses, which is lovely um, because that sense of responsibility and seriousness is there. And also, you know, since the days of having a um, uh, what was it, the Leonardo da Vinci painting of Mona Lisa with a cigarette hanging out of her. Uh, mouth as as our uh, as our you know, sort of lo well not logo whatever it was <laughs> um, <the> to, <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah to the, the overall picture to it being called conscious isolation um, having its own branding um, you know having these different channels which we uh, optimize and use um, to to now like we've got like a set haven't we uh, we use the free, uh, light well at the university and you know we've got a really good technical team on board with us and yeah no it's it's it's, it's fantastic yeah that first panel discussion was um insane because we did it in person like most of them have been online but that first one was in person and we had what was it four four tv screens and um, yeah. a massive table and loads of mics and then um cameras at all different angles <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah it was just like really cool to see what and it was all socially distanced as well so it's like what how can technology also be used to augment real life situations and make, sure. make that kind of I mean, it's, it's like being on on um it was like being on bloody telly really wasn't it i mean you know yeah, being in some sort of sci-fi <laughs> yeah yeah hello good morning <laughs> <laughs> and and th that was great actually wasn't it because you know we can't credit it all to ourselves the the aesthetic that yeah. we're kind of going for because dan duran he was in and i yeah. suppose having this graphics mind you know, i really, didn't even like realize it was going to be on tv <laughs> so i was <laughs> didn't even wear nice clothes <laughs> but yeah no it's cool i was used to my like lockdown look <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I think I think we all were. Um, what was it that uh, Emma and I were were laughing? Uh, Emma's, by the way, to everybody that doesn't know, she's a, an excellent tutor at the University of London. She heads the foundation course and also the MA. But um, we were we were joking, saying, "God, uh, you know, we both were saying, God, we've we've both got COVID ass, you know, where we've sort of put on weight." <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, so for, I'm just talking about with regards to the visuals. <laughs> well, 
Well, the TV puts it on though, doesn't it? Puts on, no, loses weight. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. I think yeah, yeah. It's it's they it puts on. I don't know how much if it's pounds or kilograms or yeah, what. But yeah. And I should no, talk so, a bit about sorry. the collaboration with the Ingram as well. Yeah, no. I was just going to yeah. ask you actually. You know, your whole injection with regards to Ingram. Um, yeah, if you so mind. that is um, another collaboration. It's more of a kind of um, the like University of East London is a kind of ongoing one throughout the academic year and the Ingram collection is um, a one-off one this year with the hope that it would be something that would be um, repeated again in future years and the Ingram collection is a UK collection of of art and they run a um, really amazing prize for young well it's not young it's emerging artists can't say young <laughs> um, do you win it early career now I was one of the shortlisted so they shortlist um a number of artists offer them a central London show and then they select the prize and then as part of the prize there's also um a residency which I'm I was selected for so I'm part of the residency and the so that was I was part of it last year and worked really closely with Joe Barring um and Alison Price and then Joe gave a talk for us during lockdown one um, about the prize and about the collection. And then she's asked us if we'll host a, a, a kind of a private online um, lecture series for their selected um, prize winners. So that's in a couple of weeks time. And we've got quite a few different people talking um, about different arts professionals. So people talking from, um, uh, the curatorial perspective from the public art perspective um, and someone talking about social media and uh, marketing and then um, two artists who are kind of like case studies talking about public art and also talking about um, their uh, like relationships with the institutions. So hopefully it'll be really useful for the, the prize winners and um, yeah hopefully it's something we can kind of continue going forwards which i guess brings us on nicely to us both discussing future plans of ci Go yeah, on, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i mean like, like you say i think it's really important that the project grows organically and the fact that it has i think it makes it very genuine you know um actually it's something which um i i remember when i started a, i co-founded a project called pangea sculptors center um back in 2012 working with um, an individual called lucy tomlin who is also a sculptor i met her at the rca and um i i so we had numerous conversations with people about you know how to do how to have this um, how, how to how to develop a project in the best way and the best advice that i got was from uh uh, David Nash, um, he said, like you just stated earlier, let it grow organically, don't force the issue. And he, he used as an example his studio that he calls the Cathedral, which I believe is in the north of Wales. Um, <laughs> and, and yeah, so with regards to our future plans, I mean, the momentum of the, of, of the project, I mean, I suppose next semester with University of East London, um, we, we haven't booked it up yet, but that's going to be really quite exciting. <laughs> um, we also want to put together a, a virtual show, don't we, of course, um, using the skills of Naden, um, who's, by the way, to everybody, is a, a tutor at the University of East London um, on the architectural side more so. And I think actually a great show um, for their, because they had to move online um, because of COVID last semester. Um, they basically created this um, really interesting virtual show um, and did yeah. scans of all the students' works and then put it into um, a, a virtual space, a virtual gallery space. And so the idea is that we are hoping to work with an architecture student or an architect um, and to create a virtual space that is potentially kind of pushing the boundaries of what a hypothetical space could be so it could be in quite an unusual location like i don't know on yeah, yeah, the because... or in space or <laughs> like Iranian or and then um to you have that as a space that we can then use to exhibit virtual 
um, exhibits within. Um, you had the, was it you or was it Emma, um, had the nice idea um, conceptually to, um, you know, sort of use the Docklands. No, it's Emma, yeah. Was that yeah. Emma, yeah, yeah. That was cool. <laughs> and, and, I mean, you, you brought lots to the table as well with that. And it's, yeah, it's, it's just nice to see somebody like Naden that's, you know, very competent, very young as well, isn't he? Um, yeah, amazingly skillful and the idea of yeah a gallery that floats so where the university of east london is it's um as sam said right by city airport so it's by um a big expanse of water so this idea that a, a virtual gallery could be floating in on that water um is i think quite exciting because it's not yeah, it would be exciting. very logistically very easy to do in real life but it opens up these new possibilities in the virtual space. So, yeah. yeah and we've also got our um, in real life show, which sadly was postponed due to COVID, but yeah, will yeah, yeah. be happening as soon as it's possible at the university. So we'll be, we've, um, we're creating a show with 50-50, um, so half conscious isolation past speakers and then half University of East London staff and students. So it should be, should well, be a good, good show to, to check out. And John Kipps, which I believe is in the audience, is in that show, of course, being one of our uh, past speakers. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, <laughs> that, that show is going to, be, um, going to be exciting. I think that's the thing, isn't it? What the University of East London has done is opened up an opportunity for us to really kind of, um, sort of make the, the live events happen. Because we discussed it quite often, didn't we, after lockdown? you know, post lockdown, how are we going to go forward? <laughs> so I just saw uh, John Kipp saying, can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, and of course, you know, with this type of thing, if we wanted to have real life uh, concepts, it would be having to pay out for space and stuff like that. But having, you know, University of London um, support us with regards to this project now enables us to use all of the mechanics within that organization and what's great as well as we can also work they they want us to keep our autonomy but also um they don't want to be kind of sole collaborators so we are also able to work with other people like the ingram collection and um i'm also doing a project with my second years at the university of gloucestershire so they're curating an online show for our instagram exactly uh, be going live at the end of this semester so it'll be kind of live over christmas um and so, yeah, so it's great. Hopefully it's good for them for learning experience of, of what it's like and, and curatorial skills. And also um, it's really nice for me to be able to share that platform with them and to, to guide them through that process. Um, and yes, yeah, so it's, yeah, it should be, should be good. So the open call's still out. So if anyone wants to check it out, it's on, it's on our Instagram. I might apply. Yeah, do apply, please. <laughs> <laughs> should we um, talk just maybe a little bit about um, how conscious isolation has kind of benefited our practice and then open up to questions. Yeah. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's fine, I'm easy how, how has it kind of, how do you think it's benefited you as an artist? Conscious isolation? Yeah. Uh, I think that, like, like you said, it's, it's broadened the network, you know. I think also, um, especially at that time, I wasn't really doing so much in the way of... Um, talks and things so it's it's just really good practice isn't it to be able to um organize and speak about you know what it is that you do also just being able to um sort of architect new routes of connectivity you know uh, through people um it's been fantastic um and it's brought a lot of sort of new uh, new outlooks and new skills into my uh, into my repertoire into my arsenal um and yeah i just it's just been really really good fun you know it's been great working with you on it um we have a laugh don't we um yeah i think i think it's i think it's just a really really nice you know organically led project that has you know i mean with, with the speakers that we've had it's kind of got its own kudos going on you know how about you yeah, definitely network wise, uh, the possibility to um, network across different parts of the, the country and internationally. And I think because we, we obviously have known each other a while, but we haven't necessarily 
you know, spent loads and loads of time together in person, it's mm. a great chance for me to meet some of your contacts and to, yeah. um, and I think also it's been nice for our, like, um, the rest, you know, our audience, because it feels like people have made connections across. Absolutely. Um, from, as a result of talks or as a result of um, panel discussions or some of the shows, there's been kind of lots of connections being made. Um, and I really like that. I feel like uh, I like that in, in real life, like bringing people together uh, mm. from different walks of life and different experiences. And um, this is a really nice way to feel like it could still be done, even though we're boxed in in our flat currently. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know why. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like moving shapes, man. But yeah. Um, and then, yeah, and then all the, uh, the actual content. So, you know, it's, it's, it's very rare that I'll go away from an um, event, uh, especially the artist talks or the panel discussions without something that's kind of I'll percolate on for a while and be thinking about um, something they've said or so, a way that they navigate their practice or kind of, um, yeah, I don't know. And then it's been really useful in relation to teaching because there's so much that I can take from it and use mm. examples and kind of uh, hopefully convey some of that across to the students as a result of one of the artists. I mean, I mean we've got an absolutely fantastic archive now, you know, of footage. There's some great, so there's so many great artists, like, I, it really I, is. yeah, it's really, it's, um, and it's what, it's what's great about being a creative, isn't it, is this ability to, like, these connections, it's like, there's so many interesting people out there and we are able to, to meet them and chat to them. So I think it's really, really nice as well. Um, Absolutely. So yeah. The love, not money. Think, what's that? The love, not money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, sometimes it's for money, but very rarely, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah. And then, what about advice for students? Have you got any advice? Because obviously quite a lot of the, it's not always, we're not always um, focused um around students our, our kind of audience is broader um but we quite often come back to this as a because i guess part of it was about when we first set it up wasn't it, it was about being aware that suddenly students had been kind of removed like they weren't allowed into their institutions and it suddenly all kind of I think it affected everyone obviously and it affected professional artists and creatives but I think they were obviously a bit more settled and used to using studios and kind of used to mm. whereas for students I think it was just really there's even more disruptive things so we've kind of as a constant throughout all the talks and panel discussions we've got this theme running through about um how it can be used to help younger um or emerging artists not younger in a <laughs> <laughs> younger in terms of career so yeah sam any advice for students yeah i think like you say you know it's 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 tricky times strange times um and i suppose to an extent you know sort of more more difficult um but what what i would say is yeah i mean this is the thing isn't it with artists is that artists need to have this connectivity with the world you know, to be able to inspire and be inspired. And so using these types of tools, um, you know, speaking with one another via optics is, is, is so, so incredibly important. And especially having the visual, um, the, the visual aspect of it also. I mean, you know, it's great because I, I, I've, I've got a couple of sculptures here, which, you know, we've had 3D printed um, at the University of East London. Um, and, on a telephone call obviously I mean I would have to just you know tell you about it you know sort of very physically that's quite a fun one um but um yeah so I would, I would say I, I mean for students it's really really important I've always said this stressed it so, so many times to my students in the past um you know be don't be a shark be a wolf you know and what I mean by that is you know don't be swimming by yourself um in, in getting your gigs and being quite sort of quite quite a quite a um what, what do you call it a, a predator in the, that respect um be, be a wolf because the community around you is what really really helps you and pushes you and inspires you um you know we're all in this together you know very very literally more than ever before because of covid you know everybody can speak about 
this, you know, at one side of the world to the other and have similar, um, similar, I suppose, day to days, you know? So, yeah, I think it's just, it's just really important to keep, keep the momentum going through the studio. You know, you don't have to have a massive studio. You can just have a bloody sketch pad and, you know, get your ideas down and, you know, there's, there's always a horizon, isn't there, of course, uh, for, for projects, commissions, things like this. That's something which I've, I've actually found really useful is the time, you know, because I think that artists, we, we all, uh, we all, um, we, we all, um, God, what's, what's the right word? Reflect a lot, you know. I think that, I don't know about you, but when I do a project, like a big gig, whatever it might be, um, I usually take, you know, about two weeks uh, take a couple of step backs and two weeks to reflect on it and that's something which I think we've been able to do much much more of during this time I mean yeah I've, I've tried to with my agent we've been working towards getting certain gigs um, positioned for the future so really using this time to um, inevitably make some realizations with regards to very very large-scale ambitious uh, sculptural projects one which um, I mean, hopefully we, we get somewhere with it, working uh, with the Serpentine on the Serpentine, you yeah? know? These things, they take a lot of time, they take a lot of communication, they take a lot of planning. Uh, this is three years in the future type territory. <laughs> How about yourself? I mean, what would you say? Always prepare props for a Zoom call, because <laughs> I mean, the only thing I've got that I can reach is, uh, is my wink, wink mug. <laughs> I like it's it. not as good. I didn't even make it myself. I feel very sad. <laughs> um, no, what advice? Seriously, what advice? Um, uh, support each other always. Yes. Um, going forwards, like peer groups are so important. Um, it's just like so so valuable. And and that's one another thing that can be really great is online platforms make it so much easier. Like I've I've kept in touch with um quite a few people from my undergrads, which I finished in two thousand and ten. But we've and I've met, I've seen people in, in real life too, but we've not had like an official reunion. So I was like, oh, this lockdown, um, let's arrange our 10 year reunion. So we're going to do that on Sunday online. Um, uh, Cause everyone's, lots of people are in, like international now and I studied in Glasgow. So it's not that easy to get up there all the time. So it's a great opportunity. So keep like, keep peer groups, and you like you know either online or in 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 real life <laughs> it's like this isn't real life but no, in, in the in the physical world <laughs> uh use you know use your networks and 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 um and then i guess that kind of stems on to have fun yes. so if you're seeing if you've got this great peer group and great network it's going to be fun and even the times that aren't as fun you can support each other through that because if you're not having fun with it and if it's all suffering like i remember to saying at glasgow i was sitting drawing in the macintosh building um drawing in the corridor space because i was really interested in this corridor space and it was freezing it was like december in glasgow and it was my first semester um and he he could just walk past and really kind of nonchalantly said um how how do you how do you judge how much is the right suffering for your art or something along those lines <laughs> and i was like oh that's interesting and i think what he was getting at was kind of you know it's really important to obviously at times it's harder and it's harder work and it's not always going to be like full of perks and a walk in the park but most of the time i think it should be enjoyable and and, and fun and 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 um nourishing so otherwise it's not gonna like that's a, that's, a, that's a bloody good word actually nourishing i like that there we go <laughs> <laughs> um so i mean do, do you have like future any future plans yourself you know with regards to your practice have you used the time uh, to plan also yeah a bit i've been focusing quite a lot on thinking about things that i can do to further my the teaching side of my practice and also um just being more strategic about or maybe not more strategic but strate like being quite strategic about how i go about my practice going forward so um like 
access to workshops. I work in quite a lot of different materials, so it's kind of quite tricky to always have the facilities I need. So I, I did it. I before COVID, I downsized on my studio so that I could afford to use um, maker spaces in different places. Um, and then because of COVID, I moved away. So I'm about an hour away from my studio now. So it's it's meant that I just kind of re re configured how I work so I've got my studio in London that I go to to make work and a maker space that I can access in London when it's not COVID times and then I've got I'm living in Cambridge at the moment so I've got access to a print studio now here um, and then I yeah this kind of I now make a lot more work from home as well because it's you know for 2D work it works really really well because it's clean it's nice it's comfortable um, yeah. I've got a big table it's warm <laughs> yeah and then for 2D work it makes more sense to be elsewhere and then I've got the print and it's kind of I now got choices as to whether I want to travel or not um obviously due to COVID but also sometimes all the travel gets really exhausting yeah. and it's different. again I'm tapping into different communities so I think just being yeah being a bit more strategic and and realizing that I don't always have to be in the studio to be making work I used to always feel guilty about if I wasn't in the studio but actually sometimes it's not that beneficial and you can travel an hour like I was traveling 45 minutes even in London so even the, the fact that I'm now here doesn't make much difference but travel an hour to procrastinate a lot and then not actually be as effective when you're in there whereas it's better to to, to kind of plan it carefully and be be strategic so I, I'd say that's probably the main main change <laughs> yeah I think that's yeah it's really um it's it's a really good thing I think to work from I, I do this I've always done this I've always drawn my plans up um, at at home and then gone into the studio to act on those plans um, when making maquettes and whatnot so yeah I, I could this is funny isn't it as well because I think that that sense of guilt about not going into the studio it comes with the territory of going through education at art school you know because if you wouldn't go for whatever reason if it might be you know in the student days having a bit of a hangover <laughs> and not going in you sort of think oh for fuck's sake you know i really should be yeah, in. in sam you just have to go to the dark room and lean against the <laughs> 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 I, mean, <laughs> I do i do remember there was a point where i was making a piece when i was at the the royal college and i was literally just like i'd just be sitting i was really hung over and i was just sitting there you know just pouring wax into this mold all day long the thing is it's so therapeutic you know it didn't really um it, 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 it felt so like quite a quite a nice way of sort of relieving this hangover tension but um yeah yeah with with regards to that i that that kind of guilt that comes in um i think it's really 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 um valid not to not to feel it i mean i think it's important to feel it at times but also you know to know that you can uh, execute exactly as you please uh, exactly what you would usually within the studio at home as you know as long as it's like you say the two-dimensional stuff I mean I would never make make anything three-dimensional here that's for sure yeah no, definitely. Um, should we open up to questions see if anyone's got any um, any questions I, absolutely I yeah can do a gallery view and everyone should be able to one sec unmute themselves one sec yeah everyone should now be able to unmute if, if they want to and come on the video also if they want to if anyone's got any questions or any questions in the chat i think we've had a couple of comments about um one from sandy oh yeah yeah so being interviewed for the ingram prize and then thinking about doing other interviews with artists for um, a further project. That sounds really exciting. I'd like to, I'd like to know more about that if you're up for telling us. Yeah, it's not that way round. Um, I was going to be, I was going to repeat what Joe Baring did to me, asking yeah. people from all over the world. I've got people I know I can ask. And um, what I began to understand is that. The, the questions people ask reveal quite a lot about the, the interviewer. So I would be interviewed, I would put a piece of my work out, but it would just be a, a conduit, you know, it would just be a kind of um, initial opening up of something. 
um, or maybe it could be like a third person in the room. But basically, um, I wanted it live. I wanted it also to be full of mistakes and that kind of thing, natural. But I was really more interested in what the interviewer's impact would be on me and how I reply. And I just kind of think I might try and do that at uh, either an MPhil or PhD level, because I think even like watching you this afternoon, a huge amounts come out and it's to do with your relating, relating to each other. Hmm. And I find that fascinating and that maybe things you've said today, you would not normally perhaps have even thought about, but it's because of the conversation taking place. So I'm kind of very, very interested in all that. Yeah, and so I thought, I, and it would give me loads of material. I'd have lots and lots of material I could use. You know, I would keep the recordings and look at them and think about them and write about them and make work. I make work with, you know, from what people said to me. That's my idea. Yeah, <laughs> I okay. I'm call it. But I'm kind of interested. I am interested, yeah. But it came from Joe Baring interviewing me, which yeah. happened, I didn't do very well at all. But who cares? It was, it, I was still fascinated by it. Hmm. I'm sure you did. It's a, um, Instagram lives are quite intense experiences, aren't they? My first one ever was with Jo as well. Um, cause she did the series of interviews during the first lockdown with the last year's um, uh, selected artists. And uh, yeah, it was, it was really, she's, she really puts you at ease, but it's, it's a really intense experience being on it. Because they're so short, aren't they, Instagram lives? Or they can be so short. Yeah, 20 minutes, that's the other thing. She did 20 minutes for, for everyone. And you could be anywhere. I was in my studio, which of course is always helpful. But um, yeah, it was really interesting. And I've been watching all of them. I love them. Um, people, one of the people I really like listening to, I quickly emailed and said, oh, I think it was fascinating what you said. And she emailed me back and said, she said absolutely, the word absolutely, 15 times. And she felt a bit embarrassed. And I thought, it didn't matter. It didn't matter you did that. But, you know that kind of normal behavior really where you are <laughs> I quite like that too and do you, I guess it will really depend like yeah that whoever's interviewing it really changes the whole experience for everyone doesn't it it's really yeah that's what I was most interested in so though it seems like I want to do it so people say things to me I'm really more interested in what they are uh, in them if you know what I mean <laughs> I had a talk by um, Robert Good. He gave an artist talk, but then he also did a um, launch for he's done a podcast called Something to Do with Art, and he interviews artists. And um, one of the artists who attended was talking about how his manner of interviewing really, um, I don't know, it was like really put him at ease and really made him say things that he wouldn't normally necessarily think about in that sense. So yeah, it might be, might be a good one to check out. We've had a question from Kips. Do you have any favourite talks from the CI series so far? I think we have to say Kips. <laughs> I think absolutely Kips, yeah. By far the, the, the best talk of them all. <laughs> no, it was a very good talk. Favorites? Do you have favourites, Sam? Are we allowed uh, to have favourites? I feel like it's like parents, you know, they, they always say they have favourites, but they definitely do. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's gone on to say, apart from me. <laughs> um, I, I actually, I liked um, Holly Bertel's talk, I thought that was, that was interesting. Um, I think that, um, I think that, I think that uh, Will, William Mackerel's was enlightening as well, I thought. I, I suppose um, on the, I mean, to, let me just go to the, the page, I've, I've got it up. I, I, I really like uh, Ben Woodson's, actually, I thought that, that was great as well. And uh, Becca Pelly Fry. You know, on the on the gallery model side of things, that was a really, that was a really interesting take on stuff. Um, how about you? I think Holly Howes was amazing because she um, it was she, so it wasn't a recorded one. She wanted us to do it as a as a live thing, and we had loads of attendees, and she just gave so many insights into um, uh, how to market yourself as a as an artist um, from an art journalist perspective so I think that was really valuable because it was just something that um normally you'd have to pay quite a lot of money for to go to to, to see one of her talks and um so it was free and it was accessible to everyone and we had I think we had I was, I was, I was like nearly a hundred or something participants it was a lot of people so it was really it was really great and then I've really enjoyed the panel discussions because 
the opportunity to have that more discursive aspect's been really nice. Um, then I, and then in terms of artist talks, um, Nathaniel's was really good. I really enjoyed his um, way of talking and, and kind of the way he structured it all around um, like one place, one location, projects all coming out of Beirut. Um, and I, yeah, I enjoyed the ones where it was in people's studios. So we got a little insight into their studios. So James's and Hannah Rowan's as well. So it's just like quite nice. There's a formal aspect where they're sharing a screen or sharing a presentation, but then there's also bits where um, they kind of switched to a mobile device or walked around with their laptops. And you could see, we were kind of mentioned it earlier, but yeah, you could see the little bits of their their material samples or kind of the, the with Hannah's it was great to see how she lives and works in her studio and um how she kind of makes that work for her so yeah I think those these would be it, but they've all been really different haven't they I think they've it's all been hard. really different that's the thing is that there's so much diversity uh, within the you know the topic of visual culture and yeah I mean I think that they're all they all take something you you take you always take something very special away from each talk actually i think yeah. i really liked i can't remember the guy's name um one of your friends that was in the um um oh bloody hell the climate project from it oh adam widdle yeah that's right yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It, that was really great it, went, it was like a really long one wasn't it it was like a, it, it, it was like two out two and a half hours <laughs> no, no no but it was fantastic yeah. because really? i mean i I, I was over in, um, I, I, I watched it on catch up. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny to say that and not be speaking about the BBC. Um, <laughs> I, I was watching it on ca catch up because of course I was over in Portugal doing a project at the time. So I, I wasn't able to engage as much with, with the Conscious Isolation uh, series as much as I was able to in, in the UK. Um, but yeah, that, that was brilliant because I, I remember coming in, you know, quite late from the workshop and just thinking all I want to do is chill out and yeah I, I thought well you know what I'm gonna put I'm gonna put one of these talks on and it was his that I selected he was great really energetic very sort of like flamboyant with his language and it was a great insight into um into that organization what's the thing called what's the organization called I keep I keep on thinking client reality project but that's Al Gore Extinction Rebellion yeah Extinction Rebellion yeah yeah, yeah of course because you and I went to the, the rally, didn't we? Um, we was up in uh, central London. Um, so yeah, it was, it was nice sort of being on the ground and then hearing from his perspective because he was pretty much, he was pretty serious management, wasn't he really? Yeah, kind of, not so much anymore, but yeah, for a while he was um, really um, key in uh, yeah, the production side of things. We've had another comment or question. Um, interested in how you guys manage to balance all this with teaching and maintaining your own practices do you ever sleep <laughs> <laughs> yeah i sleep loads <laughs> i'm a, like nine hours a night person but i guess i don't know so i used to party a lot so this kind of is great <laughs> it's, it's like a like a social thing um it's, it's definitely something that couldn't have happened if it weren't for covid isn't it you know? well, it could, but I guess we probably wouldn't have thought to do it, I guess. Well, maybe we would, but yeah, it wouldn't. Because we would have been at openings or events or things anyway, or parties or kind of social things. So I guess it wouldn't, yeah, probably it's, wouldn't have happened. It's nice, it's nice to you know, be the director of your own party, as it were. Exactly. I don't mean political party, obviously. <laughs> um, you know bringing people together um it's it's a wonderful thing isn't it um and i mean to be honest with you it's like it's a, it's a real it's a real pleasure actually i've found it a real pleasure um and having you know, this terrific support from you um you know it's it's, it's been it's been bloody wonderful but comment from kip sam, sam Prime Minister, <laughs> you do want to set up your own political party don't you do you want to just talk a little bit about that <laughs> <laughs> i've got i've got um a, a party um which is called the circle party and um I'm, I'm a very passionate quite outspoken liberal although my grandmother would call me probably far too left for her likings um 
but yes, the circle party, and it's based upon the concepts of this a very interesting subject called biosphere consciousness. I believe that inherently individuals need to be educated from a very young age to really understand the true um, values of what this planet is about. And uh, I'm an environmentalist, as you know, um, I'm very passionate about uh, green and renewable energies. I'm also very passionate about science and engineering, new pioneering technologies, forward thinking, looking forth into the future with a great positive momentum in which one um, can sort of have a clean conscience about exactly what it is that uh, we've done, you know, because we just, we don't have that, do we? We don't have a, our conscience cannot be clean because of the amount of hydrocarbons we burn. You know? and it, it just, just quickly, because I, I really like this and not a lot of people, I haven't spoken to a lot of people about it, but um, the, the circle party is based upon the hydrological cycle, you know, so it's kind of how the whole, Kind of system moves very, um, very, very emerges with one another and uh, works in harmony. That's the that's the visual concept for for the circle party. <laughs> well, on that note, um, any last questions? <laughs> we'll leave we'll leave Sam to change the world. I think it's probably a good, <laughs> good point to wrap up. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. It's been good to chat to you and uh, to talk a bit about the project. Um, yeah no thank you it's been lovely to speak with you stop the recording